Hi all. Um, so today we'll be going through the uh, the new features um, in 2022 R1 regarding uh, world objects. So I'll be uh, creating two examples. One will be a continuous seam world, and one would be an intermittent seam world. So uh, one of the main things is to get the world object um, activated on the mesh. Um, you have to be using batch connections. So let's go ahead and turn that on. So let's add a world object there. So initially, as I mentioned, we'll be we'll be doing a seam, uh, continuous seam world. So by default, it is continuous seam world. The source either can be a pre-built geometry or a, a mesh-based one. In this case, as you can see, uh, those are just two plates. Let me go back and show the geometry. These are just two plates, um, which will be welded to the bottom parent plate. So in this case, there's no pre-built geometry for the weld. So it'll be a mesh-based source. Um, also, you can have a normal and an angle. So what I mean by that is a normal would just be a curtain surface dropping from this particular edge uh, to the parent uh, face. Uh, angled will be, um, again, an angle from this edge to the parent face. For this particular example, I'll keep it simple. We'll just keep it normal. We'll be creating use. We'll be creating this using an edge. So let's let me change it to edge selection. Click this edge, hit OK. So there are a number of options and features you, um, you know, under under definition. I wouldn't be going through each one of them individually, but uh, you know, I'll just be going through some major ones so that you get the gist of um, what the tool is capable of. Okay. So the first one we'll be going through is uh, the edge mesh size. So what that is is, let me just open the presentation. As you can see, uh, this will be the um, width of the world itself, so the element width of the world itself. Okay. In our case, let's start with something, uh, you know, something default. Let's start around um, five mm to start with. Um, so the next option is create uh, create heat affected zone, um, which is basically if you know if people are using different terminology, it's also called the toe region, um, and in some sense. So I have that to set yes. So the heat, heat affected zone distance is how far away from the um, world uh, is your heat affected zone as well as the uh, that's the length of the heat affected zone itself which you can see here okay so let's go back and have that as uh, have that as 7 mm uh, or uh, let's let's start with four um, we can increase it if need be so I want three heat affected zone elements and I want a growth ratio of one. I don't want any ratio basically. Okay. So let's go ahead and create this mesh. Right. Obviously I did not change the global mesh sizing. So let me just change my global mesh sizing to say is 5mm and recreate the mesh. Okay. So you can see a little bit more uniform. Um, so now let's, let's verify some numbers. So from memory, uh, you know, we've got, we had, um, we had 5 mm as the edge mesh size, mesh size. So I can go to the node filter, which is control N, or you can click up here and you can actually check if this is 5 mm. And there you go, that's 5 mm. And the heat affected zone distance, each element thickness should be um, four. We can check that too. That's four and we've got three um, row basically, row one, row two, and row three. Okay, so, um, just one more feature which I forgot to mention is you can also create name selections um, of either the world or the heat affected zone. So how you do that is you can pick what name selections you want. So in this case, say I want the third layer, which will be the outer layer. Um, I pick it and then let's generate it again. So if you expand and click, uh, so you can see that's the third layer of the heat affected zone will be put in a name selection. Okay. So uh, that's basically how you create a continuous um, continuous seam world using mechanical 2022 R1. Um, let's now go ahead and look at how to create an intermediate um, seam world in the second example. 